Today we're going to be building the A-10 Thunderbolt 2 in Kerbal Space Program 2. We're going to start out with the Mark 1 cockpit, not the inline one, like uh, it seems like most people use, including myself in my KSP-1 A-10 videos, check those out. Um, and I'm using it because it just seems like it works better in KSP-2 as the A-10's cockpit, if you angle it down a little bit. We put those engines on there and uh, gave the engines a little bit of an angle. Now we're working with the procedural wings, which are so nice in Kerbal Space Program 2. It took a uh, something that was quite the job getting the shape right in Kerbal Space Program 1 and made it so easy. Like these look spot on, about as close as you could get to the A-10 wings with a, you know, a building game of any kind I feel like. Um, so yeah, this, this turned out really well with the wings and it gave me a lot of room to uh, mess around with them and get them to the about the right dimensions of the A-10. The only issue with the wings in Kerbal Space Program 2 is the new aerodynamic system makes it a little bit difficult uh, because the wings don't produce nearly as much lift it seems. Uh, this thing needed like uh, I think 100 and 120 something like that meters per second before it could take off which is pretty nuts considering the one in Kerbal Space Program 1 could take off at like 60 meters per second or something that's like double the takeoff speed. Now, of course, we're going to put our front landing gear on and offset it. Now, unfortunately, unlike my KSP-1 stock uh, A-10, we can't put a burr on this. We can't put an actual an actual gun on it because there's no firework launchers. There's nothing I can really make a gun out of. But we will put other stock weapons on it <laughs> uh, of a different kind. The only kind that uh, we can in Kerbal Space Program 2 at the time. Uh, hopefully... Maybe in 10 years we'll get fireworks in the game. <laughs> but until then, no stock guns in KSB2, sadly. Uh, but here we're going to put on some uh, pylons for the uh, well, the missiles that we don't really have. <laughs> but these are going to be for mostly uh, aesthetic value right now. We're going to stick on some bombs or spare fuel tanks, really. And we're going to test it out. <laughs> also stuck some separatrons you can see just under there. Just under the wings there on the pylons, I stuck some separatrons. This thing has a serious issue with uh, with tail strikes. Like it, it 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 is horribly balanced, much like the regular A10. I mean, it needs to keep its shells inside of the uh, gun itself instead of ejecting them, just to keep the balance right. But yeah, you can see some of the problems with the uh, <laughs> with the balancing there, and also with the gigantic control surfaces that do not move. They don't move uh, smoothly at all in KSP2. <laughs> But we finally got it flying, and we're over top of the uh, ocean heading toward the island runway, the new island runway. And uh, this thing cruises fairly well. I had to actually keep the uh, stability assist. You'll see wherever it's located. I kind of forget where it's at in KSP2. Uh, the, you can see that it's actually off because uh, this flew better with the stability assist off, oddly enough. Pretty odd. So uh, I used deploy and stuff to help this cruise in. We're just kind of lining it up. We got to a fair speed, nearly broke the sound barrier there. There's the new island runway. Not many buildings going on here. <laughs> kind of unfinished, uh, but hey, pretty cool. And we're going to try to drop the bombs on it. Now, I think I ended up making these bombs a little bit too, too aerodynamic. <laughs> they want to fly, as you'll see here. We nearly hit the tower. Come so close to hitting the tower there. And as you can see, they just flew off into the ocean, kind of hit the side of the cliff there a bit. And hey, it's starting to actually act like an A-10. <laughs> Doing some really cool maneuverable, maneuverable, maneuverable things. And uh, we're gonna come around for a second pass. I apologize for any stuttering in this video. Uh, I'll, I'll leave a clip in at the very end of the video of how this is actually running. This is like 10 FPS at most. We're gonna fire those rockets and I uh, quickly realize that it's not just the Separatrons firing, the whole thing's firing, but it did give me an idea. So first we're going to put some makeshift air brakes on there, and then we're going to put two Separatrons on those to balance out the thrust, and then we're going to offset those in opposite directions. So hopefully, hopefully it makes the pylon, whenever it launches the entire pylon, it makes it spin a bit. So basically, our missile mounts are our missiles in this. <laughs> so that... Uh, if that makes any sense. You'll see here in a bit when I actually fire them, the pylons completely disappear. <laughs> so here we are having tons of trouble getting this off the ground. I think I'm going, is that 109, 200 meters per second? Yeah, uh, it's pretty nuts how uh, low lift the wings seem to be. Maybe that's just a problem with the way I designed it. 
I, I don't know what, but you can see even with those giant control surfaces, I was just struggling to keep it in the air. And you can also see as the video goes on me messing with the angle of the engines and it really didn't seem to do much good messing with the exhaust angle. Um, but for some reason, for some reason, every A10 I make seems to have this reoccurring issue that it wants to become a submarine. And this one, this one is no different. I tried to get rid of the uh, bombs for extra, less drag rather, and uh, yeah, it becomes a submarine. And a pretty darn good one. And yeah, still dealing with the uh, with the tilt strike problem. Um, but you know, maybe it can just fly without its tail. I mean, I, I, I happened a few times, and I was seriously just thinking this took so long. Maybe I'll just do the whole video flying it without the tail, since it tends to fly so darn good without the tail. But I did finally figure it out and somewhat getting it work get it working. Um, just turned out I need to aim it at where I was wanting to go and just uh, let it fly because any kind of turning or anything else was just going to make it fall out of the sky. Um, I, I don't know what's going on with it. You can see I added a little tiny wheel there for the tail strikes. Don't tell anyone I added that. Of course, that's not on the actual A-10 because the actual A-10, I don't think it's ever hit its tail. I'm sure one has probably hit its tail on takeoff. I have a bad problem with that in all of my ATNs, though. Even the one in the Lathe Force video strikes its tail while the AI is taking it off of the runway. <laughs> um, we're going to buzz the tower and try to drop some bombs on it. Uh, they don't work too well. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot completely to drop the bombs. Forgot about that. But yeah, uh, there's a new car park now at the KSC. And uh, whether I like it or not, the A-10 was heading for that car park. As you can see, I've got full elevators, full everything, trying to push the nose up, but yeah. The new uh, the new aerodynamics engine in uh, KSP2 is going to take some learning for me. Um, but here we finally do get a hit in on the tower. We drop those bombs, and boom! <laughs> now for the... Uh, we got to try out some of the rockets that I put on here. Um, they work kind of well. Kind of, sort of well. They take some getting used to. They fire higher than what you would expect. They're definitely not as accurate, and that's saying a lot because the ones in KSP-1 aren't that accurate, but they aren't as accurate as my KSP-1 rockets, and I'm still not a good pilot, as you can see. So we drop those bombs again. I probably did this to the poor control tower like 20 times. And we fire our missiles, which fire in these little clusters kind of outward. Uh, and yeah, I lost the tail again and flew without the tail again. <laughs> dropping the bombs just for a less drag again and uh, the cool thing about these rockets uh, I accidentally staged them separately from the uh, pylons themselves decoupling so you can use them as like little boosters to uh, boost you right into the ground <laughs> but here we're going to come in on the astronaut center I think, I think it is I think that's the astronaut center and uh, we're going to come in with it and uh, look at those rockets and this is probably the best shot of the day it took many attempts and there we go. <laughs> so we've got somewhat stock weapons working and uh, accidentally also fired the uh, BERT there, which is just a, like a, what I call it, a twitch engine or whatever. Um, yeah, but hey, it looks kind of like it's firing. And we did some loop-de-loops. Finally got it uh, semi-maneuverable. And uh, flies pretty darn good now. Uh, I was kind of happy with how it turned out in the end, given how much work went into this. I gave up on this project like, three or four times during it and just picked it up the next day and I was like, I gotta finish this. I've gotta actually hit something with uh, my stock weapons, um, <laughs> my junkyard weapons there, and I gotta actually land it for the classic video ending where I poorly land the airplane that I just uh, made. <laughs> and this is no different. Here's that clip I was telling you about. This is actually how the game was running. This was what what it was running like for me. This is at 1x speed. Everything else was like two times speed. Extra frames cut out. This is completely just the raw video. Uh, I was playing it playing it in pretty much slow motion the entire time. <laughs> so it looks like it would have been a little bit more accurate given I was playing it in slow motion. But hey, we come in for an incredibly hard landing. But I didn't break anything. And that's saying something. And hey, Jeb is absolutely thrilled about it. Look at that face. Look at it.
Well, that's about all for the KSP2 A10 in its current state, but did you know that I have merch? And a lot of it. Even teddy bears. And best of all, $3 stickers. One of which is, you guessed it, the A10. And for the next four days, you can get free shipping. The link to all my merch goodness will be in the description. But in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, you can go check out my other KSP recreations in this nifty playlist right here. With the big arrow pointing to it. Right there. Click on it.